Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why it's so essential to create sisterhood? Here we are, two sisters. I mean... <laughs> you are like my sister. <laughs> really? Yes. That's weird. In your feminine side. In my feminine side. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> I know how to go into my feminine side, but right now I'm, I'm the male here. I'm holding space for recording these videos. <laughs> Um, yeah, why it's so essential to create sisterhood? Sisterhood is so beautiful when you see women connecting mm -hmm. out of rivalry, you know, without rivalry in their field. And they are really bonding into this space of feeling like one spirit, one voice, mm -hmm. one energy. It's just like one of the most magical things to witness as a man. And, um, you know, honestly, as guys, sometimes when I see sisterhood being created and that sisterhood is very strong, I feel a little bit left out of, this, out of these circles. And it's happening a lot right now in the field where I am, you know, it's like I see circles of women being created all the time and guys who are still a little bit behind trying to create uh, the same kind of intensity with, uh, with brotherhood bringing sacredness. Mm. But it's really, really beautiful and powerful. Yeah. I think that's one of the most powerful ways to create a Shakti vibe, right, in your field. Yeah, What's your absolutely. experience of sisterhood? Well, my experience of sisterhood has been a journey of mine. I mean, my whole my whole work around feminine embodiment stemmed from the separation that I had with women. And it was kind of my wounding. I always felt like groups of women were bitches and that they weren't safe and that um, I, I was being judged by women because of certain things that happened when I was younger and so I always I always had a fear of, of groups of women in particular and I know that this is quite common for a lot of women um, especially if they have some kind of wounding with the feminine whether it's your mother or traumatic experiences with groups of girls in high school or something like this so starting to recognize for myself the projection that I was having of this idea that groups of women were bitches and unsafe and starting to work with that mm -hmm. and um, approaching groups of women and being a part of women's circles and things like this really helped me to dissolve the uh, idea that I had of groups of women being unsafe and like I've worked with hundreds of women over the past two years and this is a very very common theme that women fear to go to workshops of women or go to lunches with women because mm. of this fear of being judged judged yeah, yeah, yeah or definitely. rejected or not seen or things like this or not being good enough and all this type of stuff mm. so yeah that that was sort of the landing mark for me of my transformation into sisterhood yeah um, how does it make yeah. you feel when you create sisterhood like suppose that you're in a in a circle where you suddenly you gather with a strong circle of females you know and you create sacredness, you create rituals, like how does that make you feel? How does it feel in your body or in your mind? What are the sensations that are you know, crossing your system? It feels like home. It feels like home. It feels like there's a deep understanding of vulnerability and transparency that can be shared with women. I'm sure it's the same with men. There's a there is a feeling of being seen when you're with a group of women, you're all able to relate and realize that you're all going through the same thing. You're all going through your insecurities, your jealousy, your vulnerability, and being able to talk and share about those things with each other. And especially when you have the courage and a group of women who have the capacity to talk about the feeling of threat and competition and, and might be feeling with one another and be able to clear this energy um, because there's a lot of unconscious separation that can be felt mm. with, with women and that sisterhood for me, this is like the binding force and foundation is sharing the vulnerability, especially when you're feeling triggered with another woman and mm. talking about that and then you're just able to see each other as two human beings and not these projections of threat and competition yeah. of one another. So it makes me feel seen and alive and loved and um, supported. Mm. Definitely. Beautiful. Mm. What, uh, what is the advice to you know, a woman who doesn't have sisterhood in her life? Like, where, where do you start? Do you have to come all the way to beautiful uh, you know, locations in tropical islands to do no. rituals with other women, like where do you start? Yeah, I mean, it's not even about doing rituals with women, it's just about connecting firstly to your relationship with the feminine, like 
what is your relationship to the feminine? This is the first thing I would ask you. And if you're having obstacles around connecting with women, uh, taking away the outside projection of them and having a look at how am I not calling this into my life and what am I, what ideas, beliefs and thoughts am I having to not have this, like mine was women are bitches, mm. and starting to drop this and automatically your vibration will start to change. Mm. And if you set the intention that you want more men, women in your life and being open um, energetically in your system of connecting with women and talking with them and especially sharing your vulnerability and authenticity of wanting to connect with women and not knowing how you can always approach a woman and say like, Hey, I find you someone that I'd really like to spend time with. And it's hard for me to even say this, but do you want to connect? And from there things start to open more and more, but it starts with you removing the separation mm. of wanting to connect with women. That's beautiful. And then, yeah, from there, I mean, like, it's just like, a constant stream of, of women coming in my life because this is the most important thing for me is priority is women in my life. Mm. So yeah, you That's just amazing. call it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my experience, you know, the, the self-talk that you can have, the stories that you tell yourself precisely, you know, women are bitches or I, it's not safe to be in the circle of women, mm. change that self-talk, yeah. start evolving it to things very simple like, I love having women in my life. Mm. You know, I, I mean, I do that as a as a man, but that's something that you can, <laughs> yeah. you know. And I love having men. And he has lots well. of women in his life. <laughs> but uh, you can you can do that as a woman. I, I think that the, the stories that you tell yourself are creating a field or a frequency that basically keeps you in separation. And so, if you if your desire is to really create sisterhood, start evolving towards the place of generating more love in the mm. in the thought patterns, in the energies, mm. and in the frequencies that you are. Yeah, that you're inviting, and uh, if you run out of energies, or of energy or ideas to to do something about it, just contact us. Okay, we we both have lots of resources to help you. And one more thing um, around this is we have a very deep comparison complex. Like women, com I mean, human beings compare themselves a lot to other people. But speaking from a woman's point, we always compare ourselves. She's more beautiful. She's better than me. She's more attractive. She's more, 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 more than I am. And when we can start to drop that comparison complex and just start to see us as individuals and even being able to teach one another something um, of a quality that we have rather than having an inferior, superior complex, because a lot of the time we have this feeling that I'm not good enough and that also creates more separation. So yeah. stop comparing. <laughs> yourself to other women. I love it. Yeah. Sweet. Yay. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>